So we have freeze, the acute freeze response, the kind of classic freeze response. We have tonic immobility, which is longer duration. We have flop, and then we have functional freeze and burnout. So we're going to kind of look at all of those to start to find some differences here. They're all related, but they're a little bit different. So true freeze is short. It is like a, a very momentary immobility where your nervous system and your brain are taking in information from the environment, but they don't yet know what to do, right? So it's like that deer in the headlights freeze really quick while you're assessing the situation, and then you go into another response. So you freeze to flight, or you freeze to fight, or if fight or flight is not available, you might freeze to flop, to shut down. The most important thing here is that it's very short. It is both a parasympathetic and a sympathetic activation. So you have this big charge inside, like your heart rate might increase, your respiration might increase, you feel a lot of tension in your muscles, but at the same time, you are immobilized, you might lose your voice, you can't take action. But again, in a true freeze response, it's just very momentary, and then you move into another one of the F responses responses in a full-blown F response. And that follows the same pattern of our F responses, right? We have our amygdala perceiving threat, then our periaqueductal gray is triggering the immobility. And that is communicating with the brainstem to change our autonomic system and those responses. And then fuel and resources are moving away from the prefrontal cortex, where we have higher order thinking systems, ability to make decision, to look at the situation with altitude, to inhibit our back brain and survival responses. All of that is going on in a freeze response, but there's just more immobility than a fight or flight.